everybody, I am Alphabird. We're starting a new series on the channel, the Battle Group After Action Report series. The dog's here to uh, say hello on our inaugural episode. We're looking at the second New Zealand, and the purpose for the series is to create a deck or a division, and a deck for a division, play it, review it and then finally at the very end i'll kind of give some thoughts and i just want to create a, a series that people are going to enjoy watching and i'm hoping that's what's going to happen let's review the division so i've chosen the second new zealand because i'm actually really unfamiliar with this division it released when i was on a break from youtube and uh, a, a break from the game so i am really unfamiliar with it I thought it'd be a great one to start off the battle group AARs. And so, yeah, the second New Zealand, I get to see the all the new units and uh, I get to play with them. I've not even played with this division. I don't think I've played with this division before. So, brand new. I thought it'd be an interesting place to start. So, we're going with the second New Zealand. I built the deck and I've selected balanced income. I'm not always going to be picking the same incomes and throughout my games the incomes might change so thing, things might change we'll see how it all goes let's head into the recon tab we'll have a look at the units and i'll kind of suggest why i've built uh, selected the units in the deck so uh, i'm just going to look at the the kind of array of vehicles and uh, one that caught my eye was the stuart recce these things used to be like mega strong in still division normandy 44 so i was initially drawn to kind of the stuart recce but in the end i didn't choose them at the moment the two-man sniper team or the sorry the two-man recon teams i think they're useful for some people uh, i think they're probably a bit more useful in team games i'm still not quite at the position where i'm putting them in my my 1v1 decks but i certainly think there's people out there that uh, really do use them so i'm not saying they're bad but in the end, I just, uh, I didn't really feel like the two-man team was for me. I generally don't tend to use them. The carrier 50 cal as well, that kind of caught my eye because it's similar to the Stuart Recce. So uh, I kind of had a nice look at that and I think I'm using that as my transports for some of the uh, infantry that I get access to. So I, I do kind of like that. And do you know what? I really like the symbols on these units. They really, they really look great. And then we got the, the sniper team. This nearly made it into the deck. But me as a player, I'm not fantastic with the snipers. Um, I think players out there are... Like, snipers can be absolutely fantastic. And players out there, I think, that specialise in using them, like Niller, I think, is, is one. Um, they get a lot of value out of snipers. I just don't feel like I'm amazing at using snipers. So... In this instance, I didn't opt to select them. You know, I'm not saying that they're, they're bad. I just, I just not sure I'm going to get the value out of them. But things may change. We then got the Maori Scouts again. It's a bit of a shame. Like this, this, I really love the unique units, and actually they look fantastic with those hats. Um, but yeah, I mean the the two Thompsons and the two MP40s, I just feel like they're going to be, although they're fanatical, they're just going to be a really situational. So, yeah, the Maori Scouts didn't make it for me. And then we got the, um, <laughs> the Anichin Fis. It is. <laughs> uh, you know my pronunciation skills. Again, these kind of could supplement some infantry, and I was, I was, could sort of, think about that but they don't really seem like you don't get enough of them i think to kind of do the supplement the infantry role so yeah not not really not really sure about them the thing i do notice though they're a six-man team and they've got exceptional stealth which is um kind of a bit interesting because i'm not sure whether a six-man team should get exceptional strength i'm not saying it's like there's a bug in the game i'm kind of saying do i feel like they should get exceptional stealth i think a six-man team um, I think a lot of the Greek units get much higher strength. Um, so maybe it's to do with the fact that they're Greek. But yeah. And then there was the Scout Pierce as well. And I nearly selected. Like, there's quite a lot of units in here that I kind of nearly selected. The Pierce, 
might end up in the deck who knows we'll have to see what i'm going to do in infantry combat but yeah the the piats they aren't the, the best at weaponry so there's kind of that as a downside but they could be a good selection in the end i went for the staghound mark one and i'm not really using this as like a rush vehicle like a lot of people would use this as like a rush vehicle but it's not got a lot of armor on it i'm gonna kind of try and use this in the anti-rush <laughs> the anti-rush role so this is going to be to take out early half tracks man i love this skin this is going to be to take out early half tracks and kind of early um rushes really that's that's what i'm envisaging this unit to be used for and then in c phase i kind of brought it in as as the anti-infantry kind of as an anti-infantry role i'm thinking you can get 18 of these they that, that's that's pretty strong although they're not a strong vehicle they could clear up half tracks they can definitely help out against infantry so i'm kind of thinking that might be the role that i select them for so i've gone with the a and the c phase card into the infantry tab so these, these are what I'm going to say, and I'm not going to say this on all the videos in the future, but these are definitely my own personal kind of opinions and selections of units. So, like I say, I'm not, I'm not saying this deck is going to be fantastic, and I'm not even aiming for it to be an absolutely fantastic deck. I want it to be an enjoyable deck that I enjoy playing. And sometimes decks out there that are really meta and they're going to farm loads of wins on the leaderboard, I don't really enjoy playing them. So I don't really build them that way. So rather than go through all of the choices, I'm just going to go through what I've selected. I've got the motor, motorized rifles, which funny enough, only come in the Bedfords. I don't know why, but for some reason with it being motorized rifles, it makes me think of like US troops. And they all set up like US troops, so I kind of wonder whether there should be a different transport. But hey, that's that's just me making weird observations. I've selected them for the Piat, so that's kind of why I've selected them. They are also kind of kind of a standard line infantry role, so they can help me out because I, I don't have a lot of A phase infantry. Uh, my other kind of main A phase infantry is the Oplites, and they're going to just do my main infantry job. So. Yeah, the, the motorized rifles are there for the Piats and to supplement the, the Oplites. My commanders, I've chosen the uh, Aki, Akio Matikos in the uh, command carrier. So I've chosen the command carrier so it's a bit slower so that my leaders don't get ahead of my troops. Uh, and I've selected the Akio Matikos because it's got a, a grease gun. They're two men. They're not likely to draw fire on a smoke grenade. So I kind of selected them on that basis uh, my other choice I, I think i could have brought in the diggers leaders but i've got the motorized rifle for the piat so i didn't really feel like i needed the piats um, as my cqc unit in phase a we don't get access to the uh flamethrowers in this division so i did select the uh, uh the catadromis mx and there to be my flamethrower cqc troop the grease gun's quite a good gun if i remember correctly it's been a while since i used the grease gun but yeah it was quite a good good um submachine gun so that should help out i've selected them at two star you only lose one by selecting them at two star and yeah this is going to be interesting to see how i get on with them because they are my cqc troops in a and i've only got four of them so i really cannot spam them so we're going to have to be very careful how we use them. Uh, the Oplites I've mentioned, they're kind of my standard infantry. Phase B, I'm going heavy field engineers. So most people will probably set them in phase A. I mean, you get nine of them. They've got TNT sh shells. They can really do a dent in the enemy. But I'm going for 18 in phase B. They're really cheap. So you can get loads of them out in phase B. And these are going to be my CQC infantry in phase B. They are going to die quite easily but with the tnt grenade you're going to take out like minimum five men usually i think it's like eight men from an enemy squad so as long as you engage with them reasonably well you can pretty much destroy a squad like one squad for one squad um so yeah i'm hoping the field engineers will do me well in phase b then i've got the diggers pier and i've kind of got well, I have only got these in for the Piats in Phase B. I'm 
and then I've got the Maoris because I've got the digger diggers pits there. I've got a lot of field engineers. I don't feel like I need a, a full set of opalites at 16 kind of squad. So I'm mean, opting to go for the Maoris because I think they're going to be better. Um, and they are fanatical, which I'm very excited about, you know, using the Maoris for that re reason in this not i don't want to get i don't want to make you think i'm getting it wrong i mean in the actual gameplay term that they don't surrender not because i'm role-playing fanatical units or whatever so don't make that don't make that mistake <laughs> um but yeah so i don't feel like i need uh, a full set of opalites uh, so i'm kind of going for the maori and i think they will be slightly better uh, perhaps I may end up removing these diggers here and putting them in A. We'll see how that goes. And then in C phase, I'm just going for the card of Opalites. Um, and that rounds, that's like a pretty heavy infantry tab. Mm, whether I use all that infantry, like I'm feeling at the moment, I don't have quite a lot of A phase infantry. I've probably got too much B phase infantry and my C phase is acceptable. But overall, 85 units, it just doesn't feel like a huge amount. We'll have to see how it goes. Tank tab, Stuarts. Okay, not a lot of people... Well, I don't know whether people would select these because they're actually really cheap. 30 points is really cheap. Um, my aim with the Stuarts is to kind of be anti-infantry, but really to deal with cheap half-track spam, um, especially on the German side. So, I'm not really engaging these against tanks. They can't really do a lot of damage. These are really to pick off enemy half-tracks. So, I'm feeling like I don't need eight of them. Um, so, I'm up vetting them. I'm not quite... I think four is... Might be too few. So, I'm going for one star at six. Now, whether this card stays in, whether the card goes out or not, because they kind of fulfill the same role in my mind as the Staghound Mark 1. So, we'll see how, how it goes. And then we've got Shermans. So I've got five normal Shermans. I mean, I could actually up that, that to four. We'll see how it goes. Then I've got 10 in B phase and 15 in C phase. I've kept them all low vet. The idea in my mind with these Shermans is I'm not going to be engaging tanks with these Shermans. These Shermans are purely anti-infantry. That's the idea in my mind as to how I'm going to use the Shermans. If I have to engage a tank, I will. Having said that, that's a lot of Shermans just to fulfill that role. So like 36 tanks just to kind of fulfill an anti-infantry role, really, is or 30 Shermans is a lot. So we'll see how it goes. I might even get rid of a full card there. My anti-tank role is my anti-tank tab. And I'm going pure AT guns. I thought about the Wolverine. I think a lot of people would select this. I think it's an interesting choice. I'm not 100% convinced that it's going to be better than a 17 pounder. So I'm kind of opting to just go pure AT roll. I've selected two cards of six pounders in A phase because they're cheap and I'm on balanced income. So I need some cheap AT. I also really like the idea of these six pounders from the Greeks being uh, raiders. The thing that caught my eye is that they have the 50% stealth bonus. So that could be really interesting using them uh, with with a stealth bonus on a six pounder. So yeah, I mean, it might be that we actually swap out the New Zealand version for a second Greek six pounder card. We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, and then the 17 pounders, they're like my big heavy anti-tank uh, unit. They're there to take out. The big heavy the big heavy tanks. <laughs> Anything really above a Panzer IV, above a Stug, I would say, is the 17 pounders roll. Uh, for me, in my opinion, with this deck, the six pounder can certainly do the same job, but you need to be a bit closer, really. I mean, if you look, the APCR on the six pounder's got more penetration than the AP. Um, so the six pounders can certainly do the job. And I know, I think I've casted a New Zealand deck, possibly. And I think I'm recalling they used a lot of six pounders. If I remember right, it was Gonzo, so it doesn't surprise me either. <laughs> um, so that's the anti tank tab. We kind of uh, skipped the support tab. But honestly, the support tab isn't, from my feeling, doesn't feel that great for me in this deck. We're missing the flamethrower unit, which is kind of odd because the Greeks, they, they do have flamethrowers in the Katadromis. MX, so 
really odd that they don't get the two-man flamethrower unit. Um, what I have got in here is the Sherman 1B. It's a two-kilometer firing Sherman. Yeah, it's only got HE shells, but it's there to take out early AT guns, early HMGs. I reckon it can definitely do that job. 70 points is kind of expensive. And also, I was kind of thinking, well, I want more than two. But honestly, I... Personally, I, I'm not quite sure how much value I get out of these weapons. I think they're, I think this is probably a must pick. But at the same time, I'm not sure whether I'm very good at utilizing it. So I'm thinking just two of them is going to be okay. Because you do have to micro a fair bit with this unit to get it in the right spot. Make sure you don't overexpose it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I think this is definitely going to stay in the deck. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, then I've got the Commander. I'd chosen the uh, Ikitis. Um, I kind of considered the Sherman 3. With my Commander choices, I'm probably going to go for flavor in these divisions over out-and-out -out performance. Um, having said that, though, the Dikitis are the cheapest. I've opted to bring them in the Command Carrier. I had one Command Carrier left. They're Commanders. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> Um, these guys actually they can handle themselves with the four grease guns, but they're never going to get in a fight as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I did think about picking the Sherman 3, but I decided against that. I'm sure there'll be other decks that we pick a Sherman Commander for. I chose the Bedford in su Supply Truck in Phase B. I almost considered bringing them in Phase A, and you'll see why in a moment when we look at the Artillery tab. But I think Phase B is probably going to be okay for them. And then I chose the 50 Cows. Uh, and I selected them in Phase B, which again is probably a weird choice for most people. I also selected them in the Carrier 30 cal with the two 30 cows there, just to double up with the 50 cal and the 30 cows. How many machine guns can you possibly get? <laughs> I want them all. Got to, got to, got to have them all. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought about bringing them in the A phase, but you only get four of them. So I, th I thought, yeah, let's just take eight of them B phase. We'll see how it goes. I nearly selected Spandau Bally over here in the. Uh, <laughs> with the German MG, but, you know, with the choice between the 50 cal and the German MG, I thought I'd give the 50 cal a try. It's been a while since I tried them. Most people don't take the 50 cal because they have to, they tend to open up onto tanks. So we'll see whether that's still the case. If it is the case, I might end up just selecting Spandau Bally over here in the... Uh... <laughs> I can't help it. There is the option for the Vickers as well, and the Greek one that gets the extra stealth, but... I think when you've got a choice between a 50 cal and a 7.7 mil, and even the German, the, the 7.92 mil is probably, well, this thin MG42 is better than a Vickers. So, yeah, that's my kind of thought. And the Vickers is very extremely limited on range. That's why I've chosen it. We'll see how it goes. We spoke about the anti tank tab, the anti air tab. I went with the Breda because I haven't really used the Breda much, and I wanted to see how it performed. So, and it's a kind of cool, unique unit. So, yeah, I definitely want to try it and see how it goes. They're cheap, so I picked the Breda. Uh, in the air tab as well, we also have some good fighters. So, you know, just getting some cheap anti-air might actually help me out. I don't necessarily know whether I need two cards of Bofors. And then in B-Phase, I've selected the Bofors at one star. I gave them the, the Lloyd Carrier just to make sure I don't lose them. Uh, again, most people probably wouldn't do that, but yeah, I just don't want to lose my Bofors for whatever reason. I decided that one star was better than no star because I don't think it's, it's six is too many. I don't need six of them. So four of them is fine and two is, I don't think is enough. Um, so I think four is the right choice here. And uh, I've got plenty of fighters in the air tab, so they can do a lot of the anti-air duties as well. Artillery tab. Okay, so I went with the 25 pounders. I went with them because they can be used in the AP role. So I thought, I was kind of considering, well, what do I choose here? They're better than a three inch. Let's just make sure I'm giving the right info. They are just better than a three inch, but they're not quite good as a 4.2. Well, I just thought, you never know, just in case, for whatever reason, I'm going to I'm gonna buy the 25 pounder. And it's like five points more than a 4.2 inch, so they're cheap as chips. So yeah, 
this is what I selected in Aphis. You get three of them. I choose the Greek one as well because they're raiders. So I chose them for that stealth bonus just in case. You never know. And I don't think I'm going to need more than three, especially in Aphis. Um, and so that's why I kind of I still have a, a supply truck in there. And the reason I was kind of thinking, well, I'll pick them in Aphis because I, I just have them in the normal Bedfords. Um, you could select the New Zealand version and get them in the Bedford Supply, which is an option. And that means I could remove a supply card, which means I could give myself an extra supply card. So there is that option there. We'll see how we go. And then in CFAs, I've gone for the, the New Zealand version of the £25 note, just so I can select those Bedford supplies with them. Still cheap as chip, 115 points. I don't think I... Well, first of all, you can't get the supply truck with a no-star vet. So you can only get them with a one star vet. And I thought eight in a 1v1, even though the cheapest chips might be too many. So I select them at two star. We'll see how we go. I still think seven 25 pounders in total is more than enough. And then finally, we got the off map. I decided to pick them in B phase because um, I think I can just hold on to B phase. But it is a possible option to select them in A phase. We are a balanced income. So kind of have them in phase A to slow down the enemy. Might work for us. We'll see how it goes. Now onto the ear tab. And the ear tab is really interesting in this deck. I've got to say, it is really interesting. Um, we'll, we'll see how the ear tab goes. I'm not going to say this is the best ear tab. And I, actually, as a player, I don't think I'm that great at using my air force. So it's probably one of my weaker areas of the game. I mean, let's face it, my my entire game is weak. <laughs> but yeah, my, my Air Force, I just really am not quite sure. The thing that caught my eye in this Air Force is the four Hispanos. That is mega strong, 420 mils. So going head on with enemy fighters is mega strong. So I thought four Hispanos and six 303s on a medium resilience plane sounds really strong really does sound strong so i figured i'm gonna give these a chance in a phase and we'll go head on with some focker wolves and we'll see how we do and i reckon these bow fighters can beat focker wolves head on like i say i don't really know this division i haven't seen many casts with them so a lot of the my thoughts here are kind of like i don't i don't know we'll find out kind of thoughts we'll see how it goes um, I also selected the Spitfires. They also, well, no, actually, these guys only get two Hispanos, but they've got a pretty decent bomb loadout. They can act as fighter bombers as well. So, you know, we have fighters. They are, have got bad resilience, but early on in the game, they don't tend to be a hell of a lot of AA. The 115 points are pretty cheap. So I kind of put them in there just in case. I, like I say, I'm not fantastic with my Air Force. We'll see how it goes. B phase, I decided to double up on fighters again. 20 mil uh 420 mils seems mega strong and spitfires are good if you if you um micro them well so we'll see how it goes they're cheap let's go for it so b phase we've got the greek spitfires and it's the ace of course you know i probably am gonna select all the aces no matter what just because it's the ace and like i say i'm not building these decks per for performance there is an entertainment element to them so i do want to give you know the cool skins a look and select units that are kind of a little bit cool as well and then finally in c phase i've chosen the bostons these are a, just a fantastic plane they're a great plane to fly in uh, il2 and yeah uh, a good bomber loadout if if there was a better bomber loadout i'd select the better one but I th I'm more selecting these for the boss for the actual plane, the Boston Bomber plane. 105, that's like really cheap. You can get them in C phase. Um, yeah. The other option is the Bow Fighter. I think that I could quite easily select in this deck. I mean, the, the Baltimore is pretty cheap and it's a cool plane, but it's only got medium resilience compared to the Boston that's very good. So that could get shot down. The, the payload, it doesn't quite feel like it's worth it to take the baltimores i probably should put them in the deck just to use them and and see how i go but hmm, maybe we'll we'll decide the kitty hawk as well i mean i love i love unique units the spitfire again clipped wing version as well man oh man i mean why is the clipped wing version not got better agility if i remember correctly the clipped wing version has better agility under ten thousand feet 
So in Steel Division 2, it should have better agility as far as I'm concerned. And if you look at it as well, I mean, this is... And this is the Mark 9C versus the Mark 5C. Both at one star. And so they've both got very good... In fact, no, this has got excellent agility. I mean, I think that's a mistake. I think that Spitfire Mark 9C should have better agility than that. It can still go... It can go to excellent, and then two-star could be exceptional. I think that's a mistake. Uh, when, again, not a bug, not a mistake in the game. I think Eugen should just give them more agility. I mean, it, A, it's clipped wing. B, it's a better version of the plane. C, it's got... Um, I suppose it does have the Hispanos plus the 303s, but... You know, 20 mils way more than 303s. Maybe... Plus it's a recon plane. <laughs> like, just, just give it better agility, Eugen. Just give it better agility. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, it's a cool, unique plane. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the P-51s as well that I really love. Oh my god, that skin's amazing. Um, Which, I, I just got huge speed, so it... I thought with the... P51 is that this thing could catch bombers um but yeah it just doesn't really work in 1v1 does it planes are just not quite right in 1v1 yeah the bowfire mark 10 as well i mean it's got rockets so it's not as good rockets used to be more amazing in steel division normally 44 than they are in steel division 2 but yeah it, i mean it's still got four hispanos and a seven and six 7.7s this could be an amazing plane I can't get many of them though. I mean, hmm. Yeah, there's so many good plane choices. I just, yeah, I mean, I've got more spots for them as well. We'll see how we go. This is my deck. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Okay, so we're playing second New Zealand balanced income versus 19th tank core balanced income. So I want to try and win the infantry fight. He's going to have the IS 2s. Uh, he is on balanced income though, so. You know, that's not going to be... Uh, he's going to struggle somewhat to bring out bring out those IS-2s, at least early on. Going to have to put the pressure on him, I think. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I actually lost what was happening there. Okay, so I'm kind of expecting a possible rush in the centre. It's usually what happens on this side of the map. They... Push down into this position. I'm going to try and get that forest, but I don't know. I don't know whether we will do it. I don't know whether going through that avenue is the right way to do it. I just want to set up a bit of a defensive line, and we'll see how it goes early on, and then react. React once I have a picture of what's happening, I think. Check your ammo. Uh, that's my kind of initial thought. That, some reason, oh, it's because his name is Combat. It made me think there was a combat then. It's a hit. Oh, he's already got... Okay, interesting. So he's got AA there. Might be able to ambush that AA. I do want to hold these back for a moment. Um... Bring out infantry. I can actually bring out Stuart. Now, I'm not really using them for the role that I intended to use them for. He's like... Feels very cagey. And I'm really surprised he's got AA so far forwards. Oh, it's not AA. Of course it's not. <laughs> Problem with the current patch. Okay, so we need to get something up there. Let's get Sherman Staghound up there. There's the first tank. Let's move the six pounder across. Bring in another six pounder. Attacking. Shoot eighty five on the right. Let's get off. 
the road. Uh, so I do need to take care of that, I think. I was going to say, the Bayfire should be able to take care of that. Wire a bit. Six pound up. Should have been off APCR. Let's now push through the rest because we are going to get that kill. No doubt about it. Right, he's... Ooh, okay. So what's he got here? E3485. Exactly what I don't want there. Let's push up this hill. We'll come at him from the side. I don't think he's going to expect that unless he sees it coming. A six pounder should be able to get that 85 at some point. Okay, these guys are going to come up the hill. I'm going to surprise him. quite sure what's happening. I'm listening. Enemy we are losing this position. Oh, I don't want to lose that though because I have to pull back the six pounder. Okay, it looks like I saw some movement there. I'm losing it. Wow. Big time. All my gains have just been lost in a friggin' moment. Really bad. Okay, we punched a hole. Got 21 Shermans left. He's just got a KV on the road. There's not. I need to use my anti tank for anti tank. I'm here. I'm here. beat him in the forests. That's part of my problem. You need to get counter battery up. Someone call for a camp? It's not here. Yes. Okay, taking down one of those is actually really like the Stuart should be doing that job. I just went down. Stuff. I need to use my 17 pounders. Give us a good firing position. Okay, I need to now put pressure in this area. I'm going to bring in Stuart. It's probably not the best to do that job. something there that I just saw. Yeah, there was a tank up there. We got 17 pounders on the way. More 17 pounders on the way. Many 17 pounders you can buy. Buy. <laughs> That's my feeling right now. Oh, IS2 in the center. Get off the road. Six pounder, APCR on. Efficient shot should be on. 
If we can kill that, that is a massive loss. We got 17 pounders up as well in decent positions. Yes, killed his AA. Let's respond with a bomber on the IS-2. Okay, I'm feeling confident now. Feeling confident now. We're pushing him very hard. 32 minutes, 19 seconds. Victory, 2,900 kills, 2,745 losses. We actually... Mm, that was an interesting game. I'm not sure how I feel about that game. What I would say that definitely concerned me was my CQC troops just did not perform against Tanko Disaniki and against After Machiki. Um, so it's almost a question of are they worth having? I think it's the patch publishers are just ridiculously strong right now. And in the future, um, if they're not that strong, then um, they, the effects wouldn't be as bad. But yeah, I, I was just losing so easily to those units. Okay, so I made some changes. Uh, we'll just run through the changes now. Um, the uh, Catadromis MX, I decided to remove them from the deck. Um, looking at the unit themselves, I mean, they are only a flamethrower when they're going into CQC. But I was imagining the Gre I mean, the Grease Gun just... It, I don't know whether it's just this patch or whether... Uh, in future patches, they won't be able to stand up to things like Tanko Disaniki and After Machiki. But yeah, they really just didn't do the job for me. I only had four of them anyway, so, you know, it, it, four units is a lot to take up one card slot, e even considering the performance of the unit. So yeah, we took them out. In their place, I put in the Diggers Pier. I thought I could do with a bit more infantry in A-phase. Um, so yeah, I decided to go with the Pier and the, and the Diggers. Um, so we're going to have to stay out of CQC and A phase. And then the field engineers will have to somehow do the job. It wasn't fantastic, but I think it's just the way it is uh, with how I've set the deck up. The other change I made, I removed the Stuart 5s. I just think the Stack Hound and the Stuart were performing the same role. Removing the Stuart 5 gives me two points rather than... Um, re removing the Stack Hound will give me only one point. So I decided to do that. In the Street 5's place, I've put the Sherman 3. So I've now got 10 Shermans in A phase, which might be too many. I've actually removed a card of Shermans from C phase as well. I'm kind of wondering whether to put the Sherman 3 command in. I'm not 100% convinced, but 20 Shermans in total is a fair amount of Shermans. I mean, what's that? 1,600 points. That's kind of... Kind of a large amount, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then finally, my final change, I selected the uh, Vickers HMG, so I put these into the deck um, with the remaining two points I had. It kind of helps out my infantry in A phase because I was kind of feeling like they weren't amazing or i didn't have enough of them so five extra hmgs might be able to do the job we'll see how it goes i'm gonna order early artillery on this map not the best setup and it's gonna be if he gets loads of 85s up we might be in trouble Um, he should dominate that side because he's got Tankos and Avtos. So we're going to have to try and dominate the left, I think. That's going to have to be the aim. We're not going for the... Um, cross him, but I didn't really have time, so... I could maybe have done it. I just didn't really have time. 
I mean, far left seems like it will be easiest to push. So let's prepare. Well, that might take his focus off the right, which I think is going to be his best bet to beat me. Having a support Sherman there might be helpful. Con unit as well might be helpful. Okay, do we start now? I think we strike while the iron's hot. No, oh, one of them's so far away. I don't really have a leader up there, do I? Everything going. This could drastically fail. What's up, Captain? What is that? That's going to be an 85, no doubt, or a 76, maybe. Look at the, the smoke is like, it's hold on the bridge. I don't know if I've got enough smoke left. There's a tank like right in there. If we can get the motorized rifles to load, we can get the P at kill. Yeah. Okay. Sitting up, sir. Just push forward that six pound up. the support bring out more infantry Motorized rifles as well. Ambush heaven. Let's push these around this way. Come on, rifles. Here, let's do your job. 17 pounders get involved as well. Good on you, mate. 
Push one that way. Push you that way. Get ready, boys. Line on me. Okay, we need to hit this area now as well. I need support trucks to give me more smoke. Trying to get these Shermans out of this engagement. Don't really want them engaging like that. Um, okay, smoke. I don't want two there. Back. I can find close range, that's fine. I don't think I'm going to get this. Turn frontal, please. Oh! Yeah, you keep doing that. Yeah, here comes the smoke. Because over the road, six pounders go. Shouldn't be able to do this. And I'm not sure what happened with him driving up to my Sherman tank, but that definitely didn't help him. I never noticed this little spot here. The tractor. <laughs> the floating hay bales. Okay, so we are second New Zealand playing balance up against undercooked, but playing the sixth airborne also on balanced. Now I'm, I think I saw the leaderboard, and I think undercooked bat is currently top. Might be wrong. I'm pretty sure he's strong. Um, so I'm expecting to lose this game if I'm honest, but we will kind of just. Do our best and see how we go. Kind of weird to see a balanced sixth airborne. I wasn't not really expecting a balanced sixth airborne. Okay, so it look looks like he's pushing over here, which is the right play coming down this road, really. I'm gonna have to wait until I can defeat a tempest. can't really take anything close because he's got stuff all over his infantry. Let's bring this Sherman across. Now I can engage a bow fighter. Behind it a Spitfire and we should kill that Tempest. If I need to get on that ASAP before that sick Sherman dies. You'll be right. Come on, Booth Fire, get there. Oh, he did die, but the Booth Fire finished him. Attacking. What are the orders? I'm hit. Ah, my pit. Oh, God, we got stuff down here. Ah, uh, 59. Not doing, I guess we're not doing too badly. Gotta to remember I'm not doing too badly. Think about it. Although I am now disheartened. Disheartened? I've now taken the disheartened trait. Losing my medic. Ah, that's me, Don. I'm done now. We gave her a good guy. Fuck that shit.
losing that Sherman really pissed me off. This is my problem. Like, against good players. I was giving that a good go, but look at my kill losses. It's ridiculous. It's like in the previous matches where I've won. It's more just... It, this game is more just about overwhelming your opponent, I would say. I think it just feels like if you overwhelm your opponent, you like it makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, but it's the the feeling of losing is not nice. Like it's stressful. It's uncomfortable. I don't like it. I actually didn't find as stressful in that game as I have done in the past. But that was probably because it was balance versus balance, and I wasn't overwhelmed in Maverick. Like when a top player just Maverick spams me and Vanguard. Vanguard and Maverick unit spams me. It's horrible. Like it's just does it's not enjoyable to be overwhelmed. Now, I think that is my point. It's not enjoyable to be overwhelmed. And it seems like in this game, one of the best ways to win is overwhelming your opponent. So basically putting your opponent in an uncomfortable situ in an uncomfortable feeling. Like, how is that an enjoyable game? I fly IL2 and I get shot down all the time. I still friggin' love the game. It's not uncomfortable to play and get shot down. I know that I'm not as skilled. I just get shot down. I don't feel uncomfortable playing the game. I love it. I even love getting shot down. It's, it's just great fun. It's a great game. In this game, if I lose, it's because I'm feeling uncomfortable. Yeah, that's what part of my problem is with this game. It's just like how to make your how to make you an uncomfortable person 101. Great, Eugene. You created a game that makes me uncomfortable. Like fantastic. Well done, Eugene. You made you made a game that overwhelms me, stresses me out, and will probably one day lead lead me to having a heart attack. Great job, Eugene. Like ridiculous. <laughs> oh, anyway, undercooked bat. I mean, he was always going to win, to be fair. I think he's pretty high on the leaderboard. Um, we'll check it out soon. Like I said, I think I did well for a long time, but if he'd have been on a different income, I would have been absolutely destroyed. Let's face it. Let's face it. If he'd have been on Vanguard or Maverick income, I would have been destroyed. Yeah, he is top of the leaderboard. He's only had one defeat. I mean, he's probably someone amazing playing under a different pseudonym. So it's not, let's face it, it's not a surprise that I lost that game. I just would like to feel... Um, in a better mood. I would like to feel... I'd like to enjoy losing. I'd like to enjoy the feeling of losing a game. Like the feeling of someone beating me because they're a better skilled player. I just don't feel like that in this game. I just feel like I get overwhelmed and stressed out. And then and then that just leads me to pretend that the other guy beat me for some unjust reason when they're just a better player than me. But because I'm stressed out, because Eugene have put me in a shitty situation that I'm stressed out about, that then I feel like, you know, like... I then end up in a run where, and it's just because I'm stressed out. Like, I'm frustrated and stressed out. So, of course, I'm going to be feeling this way. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm going to have a heart attack one day. Okay, so we are New Zealand playing the second guard's tank core. He's on Vanguard income, so he's going to push hard. And uh, we got to try and stop that. Didn't really get my setup right, but we'll give it a go. We need my off map ASAP in B phase for sure. We'll see what we can do. Uh, second guards, if he brings out loads of T34s, we could be in uh, T3485s. We could be in serious trouble. We'll see how it goes. We're going to need a lot of artillery shells. And the key is going to be to keep our Shermans moving, I think. 
85. We've got to avoid 85s where we can as well. That's an 85. 76. We can take the 76. Let me get my infantry, try and get it ahead. goes 76 I actually lost my bow fire. Why did my off mat not fire? It's firing now. Why does that seem like the worst emergency off map fire I've seen? It's got another 85 in there, man alive. Be able to get rid of those tanks. Okay, so we are second New Zealand. We're playing balance. We're up against 14th infantry, also playing balanced. So we could be up against tigers. Well, we will be up against tigers, I think, and stugs. Their infantry, I don't think on this patch is as strong as it could be. Uh, yeah. But our infantry, I don't think is that strong either. This deck doesn't really seem to have too strong an infantry uh, component. I think it's just... Kind of style that I don't like playing. That could be a Panzer Shrek that I'm kind of worried about. I want you on the hill. Thanks. No, that's two locks. I think we've both gone to this side, from the looks of it. I 
There's the Panzer II locks. We can kill these with the Shermans. And actually, we can kill them with the motorized rifles as well. those Shermans to get ambushed. I'm going to bring in one Sherman and some more infantry. Wake up, fellas. It's not tea time. Yeah, I mean, we just overwhelm an area and push through, really, isn't it? Let's bring ourselves a Spitfire to hit the reinforcements when they come in. The problem is I can't really scout out. I guess I have the Staghounds. As long as I can keep the Shermans alive, they can kill the Panzer IIs. Ooh, an 81mm mortar. Through. Let's get out. If that's an order. Yes, mate. Just keep pushing forwards. That's what I wanted to discover. Twelve, twelve, right now. He's kind of still behind me. Will be stuck behind me, so I have to realize about that. You kind of want someone to try and get that back. I'll surrender him now. Let's move across. Sure, what that is. Okay, we got a tiger. And 
here comes the big field engineer rush. Keep moving. Like, who needs... Hey, hey. He's just flying above me with an ME-109. He's got infantry in there, but... Right now, we don't have to deal with that. We need to try and retake back the left. I need some AI. Can't let him continue like this. Section of your order, sir. Waiting construction. Successful hit. Waiting for coordinates. Just get me out of here. Ooh, big hit there, and he'll be very pleased with that, but does it really affect me? I'm not hundred percent sure. Need to get rid of that shtug. Ooh, something was... yeah. Send it through. Need to get rid of that shtug. Motorized rifles just trying to chase them down on foot. They're gonna get there. No, not quite. Okay, so haven't played with the deck quite a few times now. Not sure my exact uh, win rate ratio right now. I think I've probably had about five games, I would say, at this point. Um, I'm just going to make a quick change to the ear tab. I feel like the bow fighters, having played with them, the four Hispanos are good. And they can go head on, but their, their agility being so bad is just... Um, it's hard to cope with. You kind of don't get those head-ons that I was expecting. Like if you do get them, it's it's against a player that knows not to head, like that knows that doesn't know. Sorry, not to head on a bow fighter because I think most good players will know not to head on bow fighters. I had a game against uh, one of the top players, yeah, and they just avoided all the engagements. And as soon as you turn away and this thing tries to t turn, it, it's it's terrible. So in the end, I I don't think it is actually worth having this in the deck. Despite the fact that when it actually gets on target, it does perform. And it can do some really good damage in the ground strafing roll. Yeah, so I've decided to take it out in its place. I'm going to put in the Spitfire. Uh, we're going to have a look look at the Recon Spitfire. The Spitfire Mark 9C with the clipped wings. It's still got two Hispanos and four Brownings. So I think it can still you know, duel with enemy planes, and it's got pretty decent agility, so I am going to have to micro it a little bit, but it has the recon element as well, so it could be interesting at 85 points to get one of these up and provide that recon optic, so I think that's probably what I'm going to do. My other option I considered was putting the Spitfires in phase A and having four of those. Uh, no, only two. Okay, so yeah, so having only two at phase A doesn't really make sense. So I've kept them in phase B, but I decided to up vet them from one to two stars, take going from four to two. I don't think I'm going to use like four fighters 
The Spitfire Mark 9C I can pretty much treat as a fighter. And I've got the Fighter Bombers, the Spitfire variants. So, I mean, I could even bring in the other Spitfire Bombers in A phase to replace the Spitfire Mark 9C. That is an option. So, but we'll see how we get on with the recon. We'll see how we get on with the recon. And this is a pretty cool plane, so it would be nice to have it. And the same with the uh, fighter Spitfire. It's uh, it's one of the aces. Um, so yeah, let's let's have it in the deck and uh, use it. So that's my change. I'm pretty close to what I think. You know, is the end of this battle group review. I'm just now kind of trying to play and get a decent game to show you as the featured match. At the moment, I've been kind of either heavily winning or heavily losing. So. I'm trying to get a good game to show you guys as the, the featured game. Also, the Braiders, the 20 mil Braiders. In terms of the anti-air roll, I don't think they're fantastic, but I do like having these. You can call them in and use them as fire support for your infantry. Um, so, yeah, 45 points. They're pretty fast as well. Uh, 65 on roads. You know, they're decently speedy, so they can get to the front and basically just fire support for your infantry, really. Um, so I am going to keep those in the deck, but they aren't amazing. Uh, they aren't amazing. I'm not going to change the deck anymore. I think that is around about where I'm going to leave things off. And we'll finish the battle group after action report with my kind of final thoughts on the division. Um, the stag hounds in the recon tab. I think they certainly can be aggressive on one of those rush tactics. I don't particularly use them that way. I kind of use them as an anti-rush tactic, but I didn't really get a chance to use them in that role too often. And certainly the C phase card, I didn't really get too much use out of that. I think I could perhaps change that in some aspect, but I liked that they were going to be available to clear up infantry towards the end. And I think if that game went any longer, I would have ran out of Shermans. I probably would have been on the, the Staghounds in full. I think I had probably about 12 of them left uh, towards the end of the game. Staghounds can be really strong in an initial rush, especially on a Vanguard Maverick kind of play style, along with Shermans. Um, and, and then especially with these Field Engineers, 15 points. I think perhaps... This might be one of the only infantry units where I think 15 points is kind of acceptable because they are a five-man squad. But yeah, I'm just not a big fan of just the, the cheap infantry and the, the cheap prices of units. I was kind of surprised the CQC infantry was, was kind of really didn't perform well at all. Um, but then looking back, you know, it's just got the life boy as a flame art the grease gun clearly didn't do the job so these really aren't a cqc division i think it's just the fact that you can bring in a lot of infantry units not quite well i didn't even use the 20 point diggers as well i suspect a lot of people use the 20 point diggers so you've got six cards of 20 point infantry and a card of 15 you know a card of 20 point motorized rifles and a card of 15 point field engineers that is some cheap ass infantry for sure so cheap and uh yeah i mean i guess you can hear my feelings i just doesn't feel like that tactical and a sense that i, I really want to feel and i do feel that way with the shit with the tank combat i kind of feel like especially now the range changes have come in you know, my Shermans, I don't want to engage them against Jagdpanzers or Tigers or T-34-85s. So I am taking a tactical sense where I'm, I'll hide them behind a building if there's a tank that I really don't want them to engage against. And then when that tank's dead, I'll bring them out again. That feels like a tactical kind of game. Whereas the infantry combat just, just doesn't really feel that way to me. There's so many anti-tank guns. The 6-pounders and the 17-pounders just really good anti-tank guns but it, it it's just there's just so many i can see why this is considered one of the best competitive decks the off map certainly in a vanguard or uh 
Vanguard playstyle will probably be an A phase, Maverick maybe an A phase as well. And I think some of the artillery is a little bit lackluster in this deck, but the 25 pounders, I mean, they're cheap and they certainly did the job in that game. So they definitely did enough for me. The ear tab, I'm sure somebody could be a bit more aggressive with. I think most people would take more of the Spitfire Mark 8 Cs. These are really good planes. Um, they are just just fantastic, a fantastic payload. Um, and they've, they've got some good agility. Not the fastest planes ever, but yeah, I mean, they are really, really good plane at the planes. And I do really like the skins and the unique aspect of this division in terms of the plane tab. I wish I could kind of have played with the Baltimore and the P-51s, but they really just aren't good enough for 1v1 play. And the Bowfighters, it's a shame it didn't quite work out in the end with the Bowfighter. Again, a pretty unique plane, but yeah, a bit of a shame it didn't work out. The Boston's are fantastic um jacqueline and there on this one i imagine that's a famous specific boston that i don't know about um that was probably in the deck um guides that eugene put together like the early access preview deck talk through guides but yeah the boston's again it's a very good resilience plane these survive a hell of a lot of punishment so just yeah just great stuff it, it's like not really a tab i guess the artillery tab is the only one that's a little bit lackluster but at the same time you've got an you've got a really good off map or you've got a good enough off map 140 mils it's not amazing but it's definitely good enough it's definitely good enough um people would certainly not not balk not say they wouldn't want that off map it's definitely good enough it's just not like a 200 plus millimeter off map and then maybe the tank tab. No, I no. I mean, it's Sherman's. I mean, it's a Sherman punch. <laughs> it, this is it's just a Sherman punch to the heart, isn't it? I was really, I really enjoyed playing with the Braider twenty mils as well. Um, I, yeah, just a cool little unit. I really in, enjoyed using this unit. In and yeah, you can get it up. They're cheap. You can get it up for some early AA to supplement your planes. And then later on, once you've brought out the Bofors, perhaps with your commander, you can then rush these to the front to act as 20 mils on the front line in kind of the anti-infantry duty. It's, it's just, just a great little unit. I don't know whether most like top competitive players would use this, but I really enjoyed using it. It's probably, yeah, let's, let's talk about my favorite unit of the deck, having, you know, done the battle group AAR. What is my favourite unit of the deck? Well, I think the, re the reason I say it is because I think this is my favourite unit of the deck. It's just so cool. It looks amazing. The skin's fantastic. It's a bit of a shame that like the icon card is not quite right here. And also in-game, in it's got a weird like colour to it. It's not quite per uh, It's not quite right. But yeah, it just... It's just so good. It's just so good. I love that unit. Um, right, I'm going to shoehorn in a scoring system. So up on screen should be a snapshot of my score for the deck and accompanying it, a fun rating. Um, this is all about a bit of fun. The scoring systems, the, the ratings that I'm giving them, the, the figures that I'm giving them, they don't really mean that much. Uh, it's just all a bit of fun, so don't take things too seriously. But I'm going to kind of score each tab out of five as to sort of how good I think it is. You know, but it, it's not just performance. It's kind of how much I enjoyed it, how good it is, sort of how, what the variety of units are. It's, it's just, it doesn't really mean that much, but I just think it'd be a bit of fun uh, to give each deck a kind of score uh, add that all up so it's out of 40 and then as it says on the tin the fun rating is just singularly how much i enjoyed playing the deck and that's kind of this deck but also the matches that i got in the um the 1v1 games that i got as well whether they were fun whether they weren't it's not always going to be the deck that determines that but that's going to have a huge effect on how i'm feeling when i'm playing the matches so for the New Zealands, I kind of spent some time obviously talking about the system, 
we won't do that in future but i've given them a score of 28 out of 40 so that should put it in the kind of just above average mark i would say we'll see how the scoring system goes how it develops in the future um and give me your thoughts below as well seriously don't take this seriously <laughs> would be what i'm gonna say is there anything else to say perhaps if you think there should be a specific format to like the aars or you want me to cover certain aspects in the conclusion then let me know Finally. hopefully you enjoyed it like i say this this is the first kind of 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 this kind although it takes a lot of inspiration from the new player the the beginner battle groups i was doing um, i'm not going to do those anymore i just feel like they weren't being received by the majority or perhaps it's just a vocal minority they weren't being received in the way that i was intending them so you know fair enough there are complaints about those decks because they're not fantastic decks but they were never really meant to be and i think people's opinions differ on how you should approach you know giving a new player resources my opinion was to give them a deck that they could be flexible with and use in any way that they kind of want to use it some uh, of the negative comments that i was seeing did put me off doing those videos so we aren't going to continue doing those beginner battle group videos if you are a new player to the game if you're a casual player and you want to pick up the second new zealand then this deck as you've seen played in quick play and in ranked this deck can perform so by all means pick it up and play the deck i'm not going to say that it's fantastic and every new player should play this deck and it's perfectly optimized for the ranked secure 1v1 because it certainly is not and i don't build them that way um i just want to make a deck that i'm going to enjoy playing give it a review hopefully give it an entertaining have an entertaining match and video for you guys and that's my intention with these videos <laughs> okay hopefully overall the video isn't too long or videos because i'm kind of thinking this is probably going to be in two parts let me know your thoughts thanks very much for watching i am alpha birds i will see you in the future and that's goodbye from the dog as well <laughs>